back by popular demand another big batch of my favorite Parks on the Air activation tips. So please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, and today I'm going to share with you 10 more of my favorite Parks on the Air activation hacks. Well, last fall, I shared a video of my favorite Parks on the Air tips. These tips, or life hacks, will make your POTA activations successful. Well, since that video, I've collected 10 more tips from myself and others that have shared their favorites with me. So please feel free to pick and choose any of your favorites, as all of these tips that I have collected will help make your activations more enjoyable while minimizing the issues that can lead to failure. So with that, here are 10 more of my favorite, in no particular order, Parks on the Air tips. Q Wisconsin Parks on the Air, Whiskey 9 November Alpha, Whiskey 9 November Alpha, calling CQ. 3x5 note cards like these and a Sharpie are super handy in the field. I'll use these to write down the park number, park name, and even my call sign in big letter letters so that information is right in front of me. If I'm using a, a, a special event or a club call sign, I'll also add that to the card. And then that information is always in front of my eyes to, and ready for me so that I don't have to worry about what I need to say over the air. This really keeps my mind on track so I can concentrate on the QSO. Now don't get caught outside without a plan in case of rain. I carry a couple of sheets of plastic or uh, garbage bags uh, with me so that I can throw over my gear in case of a sudden shower. Uh, if the shower is short lived, this gives you protection until things clear. Otherwise, uh, the plastic will buy you time uh, to uh, keep your equipment dry while you tear down. Another bonus is that if you're working on an overnight activity like field day, something like that, uh, the uh, plastic will help ward off the early morning dew that always seems to happen outdoors. Now, unless you're in the desert, uh, mosquitoes are inevitable. I'm not a really big fan of bug sprays but while DEET is extremely effective, they can destroy the plastic parts of your equipment if you aren't careful. Instead, I rely on these thermocell units to uh, keep me bug free. Uh, they consist of a small butane cartridge and a pad coated with uh, repellent. The butane flame heats the pad and keeps you, you bug free in about a 10 foot circle. Now this may not sound like a lot, but it'll cover a picnic table or a couple of camp chairs. And you'll find these in uh, most home improvement stores or outdoor stores uh, where they sell insect repellents. Last winter, I replaced all of the ropes in my rope bag as some of them were getting frayed. Uh, my new rope bag is now color coded so that I know instantly the length of a rope by looking at its color. All of my 25 foot ropes are one color, uh, my 50 foot pieces are another color, uh, the 75s are a third color. Uh, it makes it super easy to pick up a, a rope uh, based on a particular length. Plus uh, the bright colors uh, make them easy to spot in the woods. A microfiber golf or hand towel is an invaluable accessory to your kit. Uh, you can use it to dry equipment if it starts to rain, uh, wipe down your coax or whips or other gear. Uh, if you really want your equipment to last, uh, don't put it away uh, wet or dirty. I always advocate for proper protection and a pair of gloves can be essential for when you're working with ropes. Uh, the ultra thin throw lines can cut your hands and uh, thicker ropes may cause burns. So keep a pair of gloves in your kit that you can wear during setup and tear down to protect your hands.
Knowing your grid square can be tough. For that, I use a website to look up the grid I activated from. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. Uh, but the Maidenhead grid locator will find your spot on the map with pinpoint accuracy, and maybe it'll even help you find those intersections so you can activate multiple grids at the same time. You know, busted QSOs are the worst. Uh, maybe it was a little bit of dyslexia in writing or typing down the call sign, or band conditions were such that uh, you had a difficult time hearing the person and getting that call sign uh, accurately. Uh, what I normally do is I record all of my activations, so I've got a, I've got a record to go back to and uh, Let's see what the other person said. Uh, but when I don't want to carry my video camera with me, I'll bring this little pocket recorder. This is the Tascam a DR05. It's an inexpensive recorder, but it works great for these kind of purposes. Uh, you can use it to record all your activations. Um, so you've got an audio record you can go back to and see um, you know, uh, what the person said so you can make any corrections. Uh, maybe you had a memorable QSO that you want to preserve or worst case scenario your logging program crashed and you need um, to have to recreate the file. Having an audio record with something like this will be invaluable for that. I'll leave a link down in the video description uh, for more information on this recorder. Uh, you can uh, find out more about that there. For those operators like me that use the Yaesu FT891, you know it's a pain in the butt to remove the hand mic as the plug is uh, behind the faceplate of the radio. In order to uh, disconnect the hand mic, uh, you have to first uh, remove the faceplate, then you can uh, disconnect the microphone. Uh, to get around this, I use a short uh, one foot extension cable that has um, RJ45 connections on each end, a male and a female connector. Uh, these extension cables are commonly used in uh, networking applications, but the Yaesu modular connector has the same pinout. I'll put a link to this RJ45 extension cable in uh, the video description down below. Now finally, I like to keep a notebook or log of all of my activations. I'll write down information about the activation in here, like uh, location, grid, park number, uh, where I operated from, and also things like antenna used, uh, memorable conversations, uh, propagation, and the good and the bad of what happened. I use these uh, five by eight on uh, soft-sided notebooks. They're just, they're thin, and they're just the right size for me, and I can slip them into my gear case uh, really well. But you could use any sort of notebook or journal to record your Parks on the Air experience. Well, there you have it, uh, my favorite Parks on the Air hacks. So what's your favorite? Well, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it and share it with the others. I'll filter through the comments, uh, follow up on them, and who knows, maybe yours will end up on our third uh, your favorite Parks on the Air, Air tips video. But thanks for watching. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73. Map, train, and airplanes. Oh, come on. Let's do the big one.